This is WideNet U. We normally do this in our, our office in Oxford, but we're excited to be up here in Gadsden. We did the WideNet Summit. I'm not sure how many people were able to, to come to the WideNet Summit, but uh, it was fantastic. We've really enjoyed getting to know the people up here and the businesses up here and Frio's and um, Back 40 and all, just all sorts of uh, fun places. So we're excited to be here and I'm excited to talk to you about this. At the WideNet Summit, probably the most requested, I guess, thing was more information about the email drip campaigns, the email marketing that I just kind of glossed over uh, in my very quick presentation so we could get to the good food and, and drink. So that's what this is. It is a lot of slides. I'm going to do my best to zip through it. It will, it will be recorded and the slides will be available online, but most importantly, we'll be around for a while. I think we can stay till roughly two o'clock. If you have any questions afterwards or you want to give us a call, whatever it may be, um, we're here to help you um, understand this from here on out. So, how to automate your lead generation. Marketing automation, a very vital part of it, and it's going to flow into all the different aspects of your company because marketing automation is not just about going out and getting sales and, and whatnot. It's also very, very much so about customer support and client nurturing and lead nurturing and, and the whole cycle. We're going to run through all seven of these cycles. So. First three quick questions. Why do businesses fail? Why do some thrive? And what can we do to succeed? There are three black holes that we've run into. I know at WideNet we have, as we've grown over the last 10 years, it's been, we're going to use this for invoicing, this to keep up with our contacts. Heck, we're going to choose a, an Excel sheet to try to track who's doing what in the email list. And then we're going to paste all those into the BCC field in our, in our email client. Hopefully we remember to do that and not give everybody our list, right? We've all probably received or done that. Um, all of these various systems cannot connect there or it's clodgy when you try to connect them together and it creates a lot of problems. It also flows into a very flawed strategy and then all survival marketing, which is just every sale makes or breaks you, every month makes or breaks you. The point here is to create a, a constant system of referrals and sales. So this is what we were talking about how when a client goes or a visitor goes to your website, they buy something, they register, but why do you have a system for your shopping cart that has all of your contacts, a system over here for your CRM, a system in your, in your accounting software, and you've got different contact information, and maybe your salesperson or your secretary or somebody updates that information in the invoicing, but it doesn't get updated in these other 10 systems. So that's, that's the point we're trying to, to make here. There's a hard cost per system and there's an opportunity and a time cost that, that is incurred every single time you mess up because your systems are, are so disjointed. So, and then survival marketing. Again, it's that one sale that, okay, oh my gosh, we made it through the month. Yes, we, now we gotta drum up the, the, the bills because some people aren't paying, let's focus on that. Then let's get this next sale, we got it, okay. And now we gotta do the next thing, generating interest, sell the leads, get the new customer, sign release, start over. We're losing traffic. We're losing leads and opportunities. And of course, in losing those, which are your, your big portions of your funnel, you're going to end up losing potential sales, customers, donators, volunteers, whatever, whatever it is you're trying to accomplish. It's not all about sales. We're going to talk a lot about sales, but it's applicable to any organization or business. Hunting, we just went through that. It's transactional. It's I sold you, it's like I've sold you a car and now I'm out. Thanks. The harvesting is the self-sustaining. Predictable, it's systematic. I don't know how many times you guys hear it or use it in your businesses, but all we talk about are processes. We have to have a process for this because when we hire a new person, when the older person gets too, too into the routine, they think they're going to remember every step, but they're not, right? So we got to have a process. We got to have it written down. Problems, we've gone through that. I'm just going to skip that one again. We're going to run through. All of these are various places that you may or may not want to be. These are places you probably are, whether you want to be or not, in a lot of cases. You're probably in the yellow pages. You probably have a Facebook page and don't even know it because they have company directory type pages, not just Facebook pages. So you're in a lot of these places. The question is, do you own them? And that's not on this slide, but you should own them all and control your message everywhere you are. We've got to have something simple. We've got to have something 
all in one isn't always the answer. I'm the first person to say I don't like the all in one printers because when the scanner breaks, you got to throw the whole thing away, right? All in one's not always the answer, but it definitely makes it simple. So now we're just going to get into it. What are the foundations? You have to think of every lead, every client, every visitor, every IP address, every phone identifier that you get when they install your mobile app, when they visit and they sign in on Facebook. Every Every uh, every one of those unique identifiers is a person, and they have attributes, they have traits, they're a woman or a man, they have kids, they don't have kids, they're in an age bracket, there's a lot of list segmentation and whatnot. And the systems that we're going to be talking about are what scale those relationships. We're not talking about faking a relationship and, and not having any genuine connection, we're talking about scaling that so that you can maintain that touch without having to remember to maintain that touch all the time. Because if you're successful, there's just too many people to talk to. The seven phases, you know, we're gonna go through them all. So the first step is gonna be attract interest. We've gotta to get to know the customer. If we don't know who we're talking to, how can we attract their interest? If I send all the men in here an email about our dresses are on sale, even though our slacks are on sale, I don't delineate, I don't have a segmentation. I just send a big email that says, our dresses are on sale. You're going to probably unsubscribe from that list. It was a waste of time. But in today's world, I'm gonna diverge just a little bit off because this is really crazy neat to me. We can not only tell that you're a man, but we can, and you should, be able to track this person came to my website, they filled out a form, they're a past customer, whatever. I've noticed that the last three times you've come, you've looked at <coughs> shoes, men's loafers versus tennis shoes. When I send you my email, it's now going to have tennis shoes in it for men, for you. Every person that gets that email is, is gonna get an individualized, personalized email beyond, hi Susie, and then the generic stuff below that. It's the entire thing can be automated and personalized. It's really crazy. It can be creepy. Um, so attracting the traffic. This right here, this is called a lead magnet. Any, anybody heard that jargon for lead magnet? So a lead magnet is every time you go to a website and you've been on there, say, 10 seconds, or 30 seconds, or you've scrolled a, a chunk of the way down the page, or you're moving your mouse as if you're going to close the window, or something along those lines, where they have decided you are intending to leave, or you are interested in the product. You get that blacked out background, the big interrupting window that pops up and says, hey, would you like to sign up for our ebook, or download our white paper, or whatever it might be, a thousand things. That is content marketing, that's a lead magnet, and that's how you begin to build your list. That's how you get that information from the website, from Facebook, from the phone app, whatever it might be, you get that information from there into your CRM, into your system, and some of this stuff is from an Infusionsoft uh, platform, but there's also HubSpot, there's Marketo, there's Parta, there's a thousand of them out there, but you get these things into your CRM and you do that with silly little offers because nobody says, I want to sign up for a newsletter ever. Who wants, nobody wants a newsletter. What you do want is to solve your problem and you don't ever, if your website has it, would you like to sign up for a newsletter? Right here, put your email address in. Nobody does it, right? But if you say, hey, it's on ours, are you having trouble with your website being effective? Is your website not responsive? Or, you know, if you're uh, at the doctor or a doctor, do you, do you find yourself frustrated with not being able to pre-fill all your forms out? So every time you go in there, you have to fill your form out and it takes twice as long. And I, I go on a rant about doctor's offices, but um, being able to, to market to those people directly, you're solving a problem. Yes, I want to know that. I want to figure that out. And so here's my email address. Here's my name. And then we get that into our system. That's the capturing leads part. <coughs> Again, I, I jumped ahead. Web traffic 
that leaves your site. Again, that's when they're when you're going up with your mouse out of the way. Walk-ins are walk out, networking contacts to leave, inbound phone calls. What are you doing to capture all of these various ways that, that leads come in? Because a lot of time and effort goes into getting the leads to call. But if you don't close them, then that's on sales, not marketing necessarily. And you've got to have a process in place for that. I'm skipping questions, sorry. Uh, we'll, we'll do questions at the end if you have any. So, just because you capture a lead doesn't mean you've earned the right to sell. So you come to our website and you say, yes, I'm having trouble with my outlook. I don't, I don't really care. We, I'm not here to, to sell it. I'm having trouble. And so I get your information. Does that mean I can call you? I can, but I can just call you right away and you're gonna value my product and my service? No, not, not at all. Um, we have to tie that back in. We have to start delivering. Gary Vaynerchuk, I think I've mentioned him in every single talk I do. He's just my idol. He's my industry's uh, chief go-getter and, and he's everywhere. But he wrote a book called Jab, 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 Right Hook. And it's about give. You think about your friends. Are you going to go do something for a friend that has never, ever done a thing for you? No, you're more likely to go if they just, hey, you want to borrow my car? You want this? You want that? Why don't you get a drink out of my fridge? You give, you give. That's where those lead magnets uh, come in, the newsletters and whatnot. You're giving free content. I was talking to a real estate guy. You're giving this newsletter that says 10 tips to prepare your home for winter, 10 tips to begin uh, before you begin selling your house, things like that. All these different ideas, there's a thousand of them on what you can do to add value to, to that relationship, to build that relationship. And then you know what they want, then they value you, and then after you jab, 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 you can right hook and come in and ask for the sale, ask for somebody to come buy your book or whatever it might be. This is a problem. <laughs> I know that some people like to send a lot of emails in a row. Some of them like to send a lot of them every day within the same day. That is not a good solution. That is the well, surefire way of getting you yourself unsubscribed, reported as spam, whatever it might be. Do not do that. It's about being personalized and targeted and timely. Again, the shoe for the man in this age bracket after he left your site, that's the guy you need to send an email to. Not the entire list, my dress is on sale. That's a waste of time, and that's a lot of lost sales. You want to nurture those pros uh, the prospects. Why? Behind nurturing. Just some quick stats for you. The cost of not nurturing. As it comes down, these are leads. These people need to be getting your newsletter. These people need to be getting all those little light jabs, those light touches, the retargeting, if anybody's heard of that. We're not really going to go into that, but it's that creepy thing where you go on Amazon and you look at vacuums and then you're on Facebook in, a, in three minutes and all of a sudden vacuum ads are everywhere. That's retargeting. It's really neat. It's, it's kind of crazy, but that's this. That's where you're losing these people. The prospects, um, the way that you're losing your prospects, of course, are that you're not following up. You're not remembering. You're not doing a very good job of it. And then with your customers, you've got you to gotta maintain that that relationship, the, the nurturing aspect of that as well. The same thing that goes out to your, your potential leads also goes out to your current clients because you want to continue to bring value to them and make sure that you're doing a good job. Here we're just talking about this accounting firm. This accounting firm, these two people, Gleason Tax, they started a, an educational website where you could come in. They made 10 videos. That's their free giveaway. The first one was free, and after that, you would sign up for the course. Now, they made the 10 videos, and then eventually they made 20 total videos. But if you go and you sign up for this, they're not reshooting those videos every time. You're just paying $100. You get all 10 videos. They're auto-delivered every week or one week after you take the course because you have steps you're supposed to take. These people are making a killing now. They're making a killing not only on the $100, but they're making a killing on the referrals and the tax customers that are coming in because they're giving that information away. People refer people when they feel they have a connection with you, when you've done something. So this was their, their information. We're just going to skip on past that. I'm not going to read it. 
again, this will be online if you want to go into it. The original runner company, 20 different lead nurture uh, follow-up systems today. It's all about, they sell these runners that are personalized for weddings or, or whatever it might be. When you sign up, when you show any interest at all, they start emailing you and then they start asking for referrals. And getting those referrals is like keeping a customer. It's so much easier to ask a customer that you've done a good job with, that you've nurtured and you continue to wow Hey, can you can you send me somebody else versus going out and uh, let's go to a trade show, let's go to an expo and try to find a whole bunch of new customers. You still have to do that stuff, but it's a lot more effective when you get that direct referral. I'm just gonna keep on going here. When a customer isn't ready to buy today, a great a great example of that is when my wife goes to this uh, website. She wanted a, a bracelet. I don't know, it's fancy. You could get your initials on it. But she was not ready to buy it at that moment because it was $85, and she's like, if it goes on sale. So she signed up for the newsletter, waited, waited, waited. $15, about six months later, she buys it. She just wasn't ready to buy today, but she still became a customer. Now we're gonna talk about converting the sales, eliminate the salesman stigma. You're here to help. That's what we, we at I I try to drive that into to Tim and Mike and myself and everybody else. We're not here to sell people on things. We are here to help people solve their problems, and that's what you need to be doing. It's about generating that content that answers the questions. That's great for SEO. That will help you automate this. When you have systems, when you have articles written that solve the most common complaints, the most common questions when your customers call in, go ahead and make those articles out. You're gonna save you, your support team, everybody a ton of time it's going to be on your website. It's going to be indexed by Google. You're going to get the traffic for that eventually. Content marketing is a long game. It's not a short game. But the key is not just to put that big article out there in a big white area and say, all right, I got SEO. You've got to convert those people when they come to your website. That's what we're talking about, the pop-ups, the lead magnets. Sign up if you like this, if you want more information. You've got to do that or you're not automating. Again, those pop-ups are super easy to install. With an attorney, the problem is impatient shoppers find frustration. Solution: use content, videos, reports, and emails. Free value to the prospect clients. What we were just talking about. We have an attorney client. I couldn't, I couldn't figure out how in the world we're supposed to to market for him because these, you know, you're so broad. Depending on the service, so then you have to choose. Okay, the service we're going to say bankruptcy. Well, then you're probably not going to be just using Google Ads, Facebook would be a great place for that. People that are struggling, you can find, it's crazy the way that you can delimit those ads down and the content down and target those specific people for, for not very much money. Again, then driving them back to an article that you wrote about the question and then getting their information from there, having them call you, whatever it might be. Great follow-up. That's really the key there. That's how you convert the sales. If you don't follow up within 48 hours, it's like, I wanna say 80% lost sale because you're already here. You have to follow up immediately. If you have those automated things, the chat, OLARC chat, those, those free, they're not free, but they're very, very cheap programs you can install on your website. These days, the little chat window that used to be kind of annoying is almost expected. And the conversion rates for sales and support are so much higher when you have those set up, you can make the OLARC go straight to your phone. So you don't have, it's not like you have to have somebody sitting there. Okay, I'm, I've got my chat client open and I'm, I'm devoted solely to this. You can have 15 people, all with it on their phones, all, all with it on their computers, their various devices, because it's just like any other chat. And when a message comes in, it, it can do the round robin, where just one, 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 um, or it can, well, I guess round robin is where it, uh, it separates it out equally, or it can go in an order if you have somebody, the first person, I always wanted to go to, to John over here first, and then to Jill. You can do all sorts of crazy things, it's like $29 a month. And to convert sales, again, you automate that process by putting it on there, getting a system set up. When they fill out their first name and email, it goes into your CRM, now they're in your CRM. The CRM is the hub, it is really the key to all of this. This is a great example. I've been, uh, I'm sorry, I have to. 
<laughs> I got ice. Um, <laughs> so up in uh, Colorado, a lot of visitors come in. Instead of just giving them a ticket when they first come in, they give them a warning. It's free. And after that, and so they've got a lot of press over this, over the silly little thing. You got to think about those cheap, those free little things that you can do. Removing late fees from time to time, forgiving first first issues, forgiving first warnings, or whatever it might be for you. Wowing the customer is just about the most important thing you can do after you make the sale. It's an extension of your marketing. It is the customer support. It's the follow through on absolutely everything you said. The way that you you automate that process is by having the workflow systematically set up in in these systems. So it's a project, or it's a customer service workflow, or it's an automated email where every single time I click, okay, this person's website's done, it automatically sends them a, a follow up email. Or when this phase of this particular product's being built, it's going to automatically send them an email. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to rely on my 15 customer service people or my product people or my sales people to do that. It's all automated. These kind of systems just, they make a two person team, a 10 person team. And it's really, it's really crazy how much you can get done. There are times in our past in 10 years that I remember uh, Gary Vaynerchuk saying, you want to know why nobody, wants to call up those customers and wow them because they're afraid when they call them that they'll remember that they're giving them money, right? We have a monthly fee. Sometimes clients just pay those bills, right? And you're thinking, if I call them, they might remember that they're paying me, right? It's like Netflix is never gonna call you. They just want that $8. It's just gonna keep coming. You're, you're gonna not even take the time to, to discontinue it. But if you don't do that, the number of people, the, the sheer number of people you're going to lose, the, not, the number of referrals you're not going to get, all of this, all of this can be solved through the email automation, the email trip campaigns. Some of this can be done, I'll give you a few tools. Um, MailChimp, very cheap, everybody's seen it. Uh, most emails, email systems have a form of email drip campaigns, email marketing. They're not all by any means equal, but they are all pretty cheap if you're on the, just the email side. So you've got MailChimp, you've got Constant Contact, and you have Emma Marketing. Those are probably, uh, Emma's probably my favorite, um, but MailChimp is the easiest. It's just super simple. So you go in there and you can create an automatic email when somebody signs up. So somebody clicks on get our free ebook on our website, a thing pops up that was also generated from MailChimp. They type in their email address, they hit submit. Automatically, nobody has to do this now. It goes into MailChimp, MailChimp immediately sends them an email. It says, click here to get your free ebook. When they click it, it verifies that's a real email address. And then once they've gone to that page, it says, click here to confirm or to download your email. Well, what that's actually doing is confirming that you wanna to subscribe to the, to the newsletter list. And that's how you get into that CRM. Infusionsoft, HubSpot, Marketo, Pardot, these systems are a lot more expensive. Uh, I think MailChimp at its top top tier for what most of you would be doing is about $100 a month. Mm -hmm. At its cheapest, it's free. Uh, at You can have, I think, up to 10,000 people in your list and send 10,000 emails or something along those lines. Maybe it's 2,000 and 10,000 emails. But, that's free, so that'd be a great place to get started. But Infusionsoft is a couple grand set up and a few hundred dollars a month. HubSpot, you're looking at a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars a month just to run the programs. They they host your website. They do absolutely everything within the one system. Infusionsoft does everything within the one system. I like HubSpot better, but you should if it's fifteen hundred dollars a month. Right? So the next step, of course, is upselling. What do you do when you already have a client? You upsell them. McDonald's, the masters of it. Whenever you've done a great job and you're sitting there selling them, how do you, how do you follow up with that upsell? How do you follow up with the, the next things the second it's gone live or just before it goes live, right? 
when the customer is in the buying process, that's the time that you upsell. That's also the time, right when you've delivered that knockout punch, that wow, you've delivered everything you've said you'd deliver on, you've got to have a process already set up. Email marketing, I, I think it's just brilliant these days to get referrals. People don't like to ask for referrals. And it's really silly, right? I mean, I've never gotten mad because somebody asked me to refer them to somebody unless they came into my office trying to get me donuts and then asked me who, who, who else I could go sell donuts to, you know, one of those people. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about somebody you're a client with or that's a client of yours and you are going to ask them because you know you've done a great job. You've confirmed that you've done a great job and now you're going to ask for referrals. Again, the email marketing system. And I'm going to show you the interface for this. So this is actually a screenshot of Infusionsoft. You drag and drop. These are my sources here. All right. So whenever I get a new lead client, whatever, from any of these sources, I want them to come to this this spot here. That's really right. Register for Small Business Success Club. Once they've registered they will start getting notifications for all new content. Again, it's automated, it's RSS feeds, it's, you, you don't have to do anything. Now, when you come over here, indicate interest in our own software, download a file, there's a thousand different triggers, logical triggers that you can set up there. But you can say, did they open the email? Yes, no, okay, well then, now what do I wanna do? Do I wanna send them a second email, or do I wanna send an email to an internal salesperson that's going to be told they need to call this person before they lose interest. So these decision-making trees, once they're set up, and that's why Infusionsoft charges the $2,000 setup because they know this is the hardest part of the whole thing. You get it set up, you get it working for you and your business, and everything from that point on just becomes easier. These are some of the things I was talking about. Um, we are also working on our own but it is not anywhere near these <laughs> at the moment. So we're, we're working on one internally uh, for, for our clients, but it's, there are just so many out there. And I have a screenshot of all of the marketing automation services. It's about 2000. I showed it at the WideNet Summit if you were able to be there. The all-in-one sales platforms, in my opinion, are the way to go because the centralized database is is really the key it's the foundation it is absolutely everything when it comes to being able to pull any of this off you can't segment your list out you can't automatically send emails to all of your clients if all of your clients are not in the same system it has to pull from somewhere so in that case you have to pull from an all-in-one system that's that's my opinion that's that's the direction I go. That's the direction we're headed at, at WideNet, and we're and we're driving our clients in that direction as well. But um, it can be expensive, so you can still do the separate systems that are out there, like the Mailchimp. If it's something you're just trying to get into, Mailchimp, I, I think it's just the easiest. If you're if you're really looking for something to just walk out of here today and go try, that is the easiest way to go. You can put in the modal pop-ups on your website. If you're e-commerce, is anybody selling like e-commerce stuff in here? You've got, okay. Does anybody have any questions about the platforms, about how they could implement this at their particular businesses? What type of businesses do we have in here? Can we just start? Um, landscaping and uh, retail workshop. Okay. Do you have any, I'm sorry, do you have anything going on like this right now at all? We're, we're looking at implementing some of that. We used to send out a quarterly newsletter to uh, an email. We actually used to uh, do a print newsletter and that got expensive. So we're, <laughs> we started sending a, uh, an email one out and we're trying to bulk up our contact list on email because we have a pretty good contact list mailing out to you. Okay. Um, with my personal or fuel split card meetings, so we provide credit cards for any businesses that have fleet to give it to reduce the fuel costs. Um, on that side, I am using MailChimp. 
um, we do have a um, we linked out to our website, we increased our rankings to SEO campaigns and things like that. Um, but we're not doing we're not having any conversions for the website. Um, we have used an outside source for lead generation. We actually did outbound calling. We want to kind of bring that in. Do more of the retargeting and things like that. We really get the website going on the blue side. We don't have we're not doing any marketing, so that's that's something that I'll be hopefully working on very soon. <laughs> Mailchimp is very, very easy. It's super easy. It's very easy. It's and it is free. It's, it's 10,000 emails per month and 2,000 uh, limit customer list. For the free. Yeah, the free that's right. Yeah. I couldn't remember. I knew there was a 2 and a 10 in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. So, in your particular case, um, you know, if we think about the target audience for fleet, right, mm -hmm. for trucking industry, right. you're talking about a lot of mobile which we didn't really get into here. But one of the really cool things about these type of systems, the CRMs, is the way that you can integrate with the mobile website, mobile apps. Gotcha, if you can get a mobile app where, if nothing else, just your drivers, but other people are able to consume your content, you can push notify to them. The cheapest I found it is about a penny per text message, really about .085, Sense, whatever that is, but for a push notification, it's like five dollars for ten million. It's just there's just no real actual cost there. If you can get people to install a mobile app, it's just gold um, to have that on their system. Not only do you can you tie the person and all the information they fill out um, to a contact to a, uh, an actual device, so now uh, you can say. To all of the drivers that last notify or last said that they were in the southeastern United States, say send this message to them right now, or the ones that indicated that their driving is going to be up soon and they're looking for another job. We've, we've done a lot of a lot with trucking, so that's crazy. But there's so many things that you can do to tie a person. Like we said earlier, a person is is just an object. They have attributes, but you can tie that person to a phone. To an email address, of course, that's what we all try to do until you get the husband wife combo or, or whatever it might be that, that gets just confusing. Um, don't even get me started on the Facebook account. But yeah, that's off. So, no, I'm sorry. Uh, but you can tie that to that device. You can tie it to that email. You can tie it to that IP address. And all their actions, if you're using the all in one system, all of their actions are brought in together. When, when somebody fills out that form or when they call, you should be able to pull up your CRM and say, they spent five minutes looking at, I'm just gonna use our stuff because it's easy right now, uh, looking at the social media marketing page. They did not look at the website design stuff at all. So when you talk to them on the phone, don't talk to them about website design, talk to them about social media marketing because that's obvious that that's what they're interested in. And you could do that in any industry. Again, that's, that's automatic. That should just be going into your CRM. You should be able to pull that up and we're actually talking with Noble Bank because uh, Jerry Faro, there's a great guy, and he's he's uh, nerdy just like me. And we're trying to integrate their phone system with a CRM system, so that when somebody calls, a pop up happens that gives you all that information right away. And it's crazy. It's it's really interesting, and that is going to help with a lot of support issues. And if they've recently had an issue, it's it also all pops up. So, um, thank you. <laughs> Um, with concrete go to, yeah. it's with uh, concrete compactors and paint, pouring, everything. Everybody knows what concrete mm -hmm. And I know Brandon from Merrill Lynch, right? Jeez. Gosh, I have no memory. Brandon, do you want to say? Oh, just uh, the, the corporation. Where a lot a lot of the decisions are made uh, you know, outside the area, and it's, it's challenging to. Know what we can incorporate in and right. Trying to learn and see what we can do. Yeah, from service provider or office supplies to them. And we are just starting to get into the mental media and things like that. It's been really active. So I'm just trying to learn everything in the way what will work best on. I hate to, to talk about other. 
people and I'll get you to sign up for our stuff. We do good stuff, but HubSpot, sign up for their newsletter. If anybody's interested in, in this field and in the automation and in learning about this stuff, HubSpot puts out a fantastic newsletter and blog and and uh, on Facebook, you can follow them on there. They, they publish stuff all the time. It's a great, great resource. And again, that's them wowing me. So now I'm here referring them and telling you about them, even though I might not want to, right? Because I just love them. They're just so good. Um, what about y'all back there? I've gone for all the graphics printing company. I'm looking for ways to communicate with my potential clients, which are not the general population. And uh, rather than a couple crack or nothing. In the past, it's always been face to face. Don't know if I can get away from it, but it would be nice if I could expand it. Right. That's one of the things that we, we've talked about. B2B is just face to face. It's group and grin and it's networking, it's expos, it's stuff like this. You come in, you get a chance to talk and, and have a drink or whatever it might be. But it's what do you do after the networking event and the face to face? And you got that card and you, you take it home or you take it back to the office, then what do you do with that? How do you remember that that stack of cards from the XR or the trade show to follow up with an email that's personalized that you can track? Did they open it or did they not? If they didn't, send them another email. Did it bounce? Then send you an email that says, call them, check the card. Did you type it in wrong? Whatever that might be. And then follow up. Follow, are they opening all my emails and just not responding and getting back to me? Then also at the very end of that cycle, send me another email that says you should call this person. But you can automate that. You know that that whole follow-up process. Um, that way you can be in more places and not have to sit there and do the administrative uh, grind, as it were, as it were, with medium to warm leads. And these days, nobody should really be a cold lead. Cold calling doesn't work. I had a different slideshow I, I was putting together. Cold calling. Cold calling works in the sense that if you call 10,000, I'm sure you'll get a customer, but it doesn't work because the old school way of cold calling is just, I'm going to pick up the phone or I'm going to get a directory. I'm going to get the Alabama business journal. I can call these people. And nobody wants to be interrupted. It's interruptive marketing. What works though is taking a moment and, and looking at that client and then going on LinkedIn and looking them up or on Facebook and just seeing what in the world they've been doing. And with a good CRM, you can put that email address in and the first and last name of the company and it will most likely pull all that information in for you so that when you go to call them, you're not just getting that name and that phone number that was in that directory. You have literally everything that's publicly available about that client. So it's not a cold call in the sense that you know nothing about them. You've got a story built. Now you can talk to them about Nick Saban if they're an Alabama fan and not drop a bomb if they're an Auburn fan. You know, um, all those kind of neat little tricks are, are out there and they're free. They're just uh, a little time consuming in the beginning to set them up. So I think that that might, uh, maybe that's a nugget for you. I don't, I don't know. Take it or leave it. <laughs> and I'm Donna Patterson. I work here in the chamber. Uh, we use some software internally. Uh, chamber master is very old, outdated. Um, I know we've been talking to clients about some things. I can see a lot of ways that this can help us. Um, what I look for in sales, of course, what I think I get from Chamber Master, it shows, um, you know, how many views and how many times the customer has actually opened our emails and so forth. So I can see those numbers. But there's so many other things that, you know, potential that we, because I do still have to do the, the one on one cold calling. Right. You know, um, one person could in sales. For the phone that long county, this would definitely make a lot easier. Yeah, and a lot better. Good deal. Our phones were non-profit, so lack of funding. I've been in that. I would say we were not profits. Well, I'm Tracy Henderson, and we're starting the coming up with a new new product for the bracelets. And um, we're all excited about it. Um, I'm learning a lot. I don't have 
any of those terminology down and trying to sell you into learning what you guys are doing with uh, microbiology. We did hook up with WideNet, they uh, they're doing our website for us. And uh, um, not a lot to tell you yet because we're like a little bit from the birthing stage. Um, I found out the name of our company is for Mike. <laughs> um, because we were trying to come up with a name on uh, banding together, and that's some um, part of the name of our company. The bracelet will hopefully, if uh, you purchase one, when you customize it to say what you want it to say, get in the color scheme that you want. And um, the message that uh, we'll produce on these little donors here will hopefully tie you in with uh, somebody that's close to you or has a strong connection that you've made and then you want to remember that person. Um, so it's kind of a novelty thing, maybe. Um, we can kind of test it on and hopefully do real well with that. I'm really good at all. Alternatives that we're looking at to get it marketed. Very cool. My name is Amber. I'm with the doctor's office, primary urgent care clinic, walk in. Um, but again, we are corporately known, so everything is out of Atlanta. Um, so a lot of those decisions are being taken, you know, they be made or being made there. Right. We find that a lot in dealing with the corporations, but a lot of times the local offices can do their own email marketing or something along those lines. So that it's it's always a, a battle, I know, with uh, the restrictions they place on you and, and all the requirements to anything that you do to, to advertise yourself. So. Um, I'm with State Community College, uh, Workforce Development. Um, we cater to local business and industry for training and short-term non-credit career skills training programs, workforce ready programs. We just need um, a fresher, um, some more fresh ideas on marketing. Um, it's, it's harder to sell <laughs> um, education than it is just we call it the product. Um, and especially to our, our target area um, is mainly low income. Um, person has been displaced from their jobs. Selling it to a uh, local business and industry, this is a, you know, this is a good thing for your employees. It's not a huge turnover. That kind of thing, so it's just kind of harder to most of the things that we've used in the past to, to mark it's not really doesn't really work in this area. So we're just kind of looking for hopefully to be next time. I think content marketing for you would be would be fantastic. Writing articles about how to, to keep employees retained, writing articles about making sure your middle management or upper management are not a negative asset to that particular problem, uh, you know, any of that kind of training that, that might go on, hooking up with an executive coach that could write for you, you know, doing guest blogging, guest writing, things like that. I think that would be very interesting. Um, putting out that free content and making it available, getting a newsletter list and blasting it out to the local employers and the people that are looking for a job. And if you can get a mobile app, those people that are looking for jobs, push notifying them that a job has become available that meets their criteria, that wouldn't cost you very much from the push notifying stand, standpoint. I think that's, there's a lot that you can do there. But you know, I also know colleges don't necessarily have huge budgets on, on that kind of <laughs> stuff. So. Yeah, and we have found, we've been sitting in an ad and help section um, to try to attract those looking for a job. Yeah. Uh, that. And that's worked for a while, but that's kind of, that's kind of like link too. So. <laughs> no question. We're with uh, Spectrum Reef, formerly known as uh, Charter Media. Uh, for the last 20 years, our focus was in television marketing. But over the course of the last several years, it's, it's, uh, it's changed as our family dynamics and what you see in average home has changed. For example, uh, prime time in the evening, you walk in a typical American household, you'll find somebody with smartphones, tablets, laptops, somebody watching TV. We reach all those streams. I, uh, my first guess on our businesses is we probably complement each other's business in some way. We probably compete in a few of those areas. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, it's all about the eyeballs, right? I'm sorry. I said that's what we do. Okay. It's uh, Gary Vaynerchuk again. I, he's just fantastic. But he was talking about 
number one, he likes to make fun of billboards because he's like, nobody's looking at your billboard. They're all looking at their phone. They're not even looking at the road. You think they're looking at your billboard. But the interesting thing with, I guess I'm going to use the word traditional media, um, is that is finding a way to take the television, like people have done in Once Upon a Time and Lost and those things, and bringing it to Twitter and saying hashtag Once Upon a Time, and then a conversation occurs around that show that's online or an ad on the Super Bowl that ends with go to the website or go here and see the rest of the commercial. There's, there's a lot of ways, and even with billboards, uh, digital billboards, you can, you can have it set up with an RSS feed or something that automatically pushes out your most recent Facebook like, or you, know, you could filter that as well. But it could be the picture of somebody that just liked your page. So I, I love meshing it all. I think that that's fun. Oh, bottom line is, we have a great app for somebody on TV, and they go to the mobile device while they're sitting and watching the program. But when they reach these businesses, they don't have the systems in place to make it all work if it really is fun. Right. Like a mobile friendly website. Because that's what they're all doing. They're all sitting on the couch watching the TV show, and every time a commercial comes on, they do this, right? If, if not the whole time anyway, just doing this, and we can't keep focus on anything. Um, so that's interesting. So are you looking for what, – what would you say you were looking for, I guess, out of this? Um, from a, and I'm just curious at this point, like – We don't build websites. You want to? We don't build websites, but we direct people to companies that do build websites. And okay. we handle everything that's in the Okay. We partner with different companies in this part of the state. Okay. And so you handle, do you all do like social media marketing and email marketing and all that for? No. Clients as well? Okay. We do. Um, if you buy a display or, or a banner ad, um, that banner ad, will be seen on the top 200 trauma score websites. Okay. okay. Yes. Um, when you're targeting, when you target your specific business to your specific customer, and we do that through contextual, mm -hmm. and we can also, um, you know, pinpoint to that particular customer that that targeting. Geo targeting. Right. And we do retargeting. Yeah. Where, like you say, you know, we're the monsters. When, you, when you're saying and. Uh, and you go somewhere else while I just follow you. <laughs> yes, well, the geo targeting, and um, I'm going to tell you all about this just because I'm nerdy about it, and then I'll I'll wrap it on up. But uh, man, that's interesting because Pandora. I don't know who if you listen to Pandora or Spotify or whatever it might be on your phone while you're driving down the road. But if you hear an ad, it can be targeted to I'm driving past this store. I'm driving past this circle of um, a radius around this particular GPS coordinate. So you're going to, as you're going down the interstate through Oxford, you might get an ad for the Quintard Mall, for instance, on your Pandora stream. But that's kind of crazy. But it's also even more impressive when you can use uh, a combination of geo-targeting and these, um, I'm not going to remember it right now, but it's a Bluetooth tracking within a, within a store. And you can say, oh, Susie's over looking at the women's shoes right now. Bing! And then you get something on your phone it's like, women's shoes, 10% off. That's neat and creepy um, at the same time. It's very, very cool stuff. Very relevant, personalized, targeted, as we were talking about. The only way you could do that, though, is with a solid CRM, a solid um, all-in-one kind of system platform, or you just can't put all the data together to do that. Um, and then the last thing is... They have these Wi-Fi routers now. I have a good buddy that's a network engineer at Earthlink. I guess I can say that and not get in trouble at all. Um, and he's, they're putting in these Wi-Fi routers all over the place. And when you walk past, you know what your phone's doing, what my phone right now is doing in my pocket. I'm not connected to a Wi-Fi, so it's constantly looking for a Wi-Fi network. And when, I, when you're walking past these stores, or walking into a store, it's going, here's a person, here's an ID, here's an ID, here's an ID. And they can tell you on any given day, your foot traffic outside the store, your foot traffic or your drive-by traffic, your in-the-store traffic, you don't have to do anything. They're tracking all of that. And it's kind of crazy. And you can then, if they ever sign up for your app, 
let's say the Apple Store is using it, and you sign up for the Apple Store app, or I guess you have their phone, so that I don't really count, but um, they can then tie that to a person because they have that ID. He's he or she's come past my store 25 times in the last month, and I know that they're a hot lead versus this person. I have no indication whether or not they've ever walked past my store, and uh, so we're going to start them on the cold lead track versus the hot lead track. So there's so so many things that you can do out there. I hope that this has helped. I thank you all very much for coming, and if you have any questions, we'll be here for a while afterwards. Yes, they'll all be on the website. Yes, on our yeah, it's you can go to widenetu.com, and it'll take you right here. Thank you.